giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Three events took place in the best region of all of FRC. We'll recap these amazing events, take a look at the FRC Top 10 as voted by Fun Nation, and preview what's to come for Week 2, all on Best of the West. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Aiden Ferrer. I'm Bryce Croucher. I'm Grace Rosenbaum. And I'm Alex. We also have a sweet giveaway tonight for those watching live. Let's bring on our producer Tyler to tell us more. Yeah, we're going to be uh, giving away once we get up on screen from our friends at Animark. Guys, uh, I think this is a pretty hot piece, don't you think so? Let's, yeah, let's just, I, oh, yeah. It's a pretty bad yeah. piece, you know, if you want to go <laughs> on or out, you know, that sort of thing. But uh, once again, for our friends at Animark, because I'm typing frantically because I didn't have it up ready, um, from our friends at Animark, we're giving away an Animark goat. A toad is it a the goat? Toad goat? Oh my God! Grace has one in hand. I have. I, I made <laughs> wow. responsible financial purchases here. <laughs> is, is that the one they're winning? The one in Grace's this, hand? This is the goat. That is the goat. It, that's they're the one from Grace's house. I don't think that's the one they're winning. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but a quote from Andy Baker, the goat is our McRib. So that's a strong quote of that makes you think Annie Mark and positions you to uh, purchase Annie Mark products and go ahead and do that. But uh, yeah, Annie Mark goat will be given away later in the show. There's, uh, it'll also come with the uh, discount code uh, as well too. And it ships out to you. So uh, we'll be giving away the keyword for that a little bit later on. Uh, so make sure you stick around for that. And you do need to be following fun or subscribe for five times luck. Andy Mark McRib back for a limited time. Yeah. <laughs> the discount code for mo for more goats. That's what you should use it for. Nice. <laughs> yep. Week one had two events take place in the PNW, uh, and one in the good old city of Angels. Bryce, start us off with the Clackamas event in Oregon. Yeah, I uh, expected Clackamas to be hotly contested this year with a number of top teams competing from both Oregon and Washington, but I was surprised nonetheless. The race for positioning at the top of the rankings was an all-out brawl throughout the last few matches of the qualification rounds. One of last year's winners, 36-36 the Generals, held the number one spot for much of the tournament until Qual's match 62 when 24-71 took the number one position, only to be overtaken by 15-40 the Flaming Chickens uh, just a few matches later in Qual match 68 when the offense of 36-74 the Cloverbots and the defense of 58-03 Apex Robotics clinched the match. Uh, going into Alliance Selection, 1540 selected 2471 Team Mean Machine for their first pick and snagged 5295 Alternating Current in the second round. The second seeded 3636 selected last year's partners 3674, but were respectively, respectfully declined. Then they allied with 2990 Hotwire and 1432 Metal Beavers. 3674 became the captain of the third alliance, picking 4488 Shockwave and 6465 Mystic Biscuit to fill out their roster. In the quarterfinals, the top four alliances all moved on with only the 4v5 series going to a third match. The semifinals, though, were a lot more complicated. The number three seed alliance powered through to the finals in two matches, but the number one alliance hit a roadblock in the form of the number four, consisting with consisting of 3711 Iron Mustangs, 1425 Air Code Zero, and 360 the revolution. Number one was able to pull out a win in the first match with a score of 230 to 157, courtesy of 75 points and fouls, but something was off with 2471's drivings. The robot seemed to be extremely unresponsive to input and very erratic in its movement. The team did everything they could to find the problem, and the situation only got worse in the second match when the Alliance's second pick, 5295, was bypassed because they cannot connect to the field. 
The Blue Lions took the victory this time with a score of 189 to 153. In the third match, Mean Machine was able to fix their controllability issue, but starting teleop period, they were dead for 40 seconds because the driver controllers had swapped before the match. Uh, this, in conjunction with 360's strong defense holding 15-40 scoring at bay, led to a Blue Alliance win and a ticket to the finals with a score of 201 to 133. So in the finals, it was the number four seed in red bumpers versus the number three seed in blue. The first match, the Red Alliance was able to come out on top with a score of 179 to 171, in part because all three robots on the Alliance could shoot their preloads in auto, in addition to the fact that both defensive robots spent their time on the Red Alliance side of the field. That left 1425 and 3711 to shoot unimpeded from closer range. The second match, played out quite similar to the similarly to the first, but this time Blue came out on top. This was in part because 6465 focused more on counter defense as opposed to regular defense, and 30, 360 racked up 45 points in fouls. The final score was 214 to 187. The third match, for reasons I'm not exactly sure, 1425 opted to play defense after autonomous and left their partners 3711 and 360 to handle the offensive effort. The Blue Alliance took the match and the Blue Banners with a score of 184 to 153. Congratulations to 3674 for defending their title and partners 4488 and 6465 on a hard-earned victory. Congrats. Go to 2521 CERT for winning EI and a third-year team 6831 AO5 Annex on the District Chairman's Award. Grace, how did things shake down up at Glacier Peak? Well. Keeping up with Clackums, there was a high-level play up in Snohomish, Washington this weekend. 37 teams descended on Glacier Peak High School, but after 12 rounds of qualification matches, it was Swerven 29-10, Jack in the Bot, out on top. Adding second-ranked 49-11, the Cyber Knights, to their alliance and picking up 47-13, Invert, on their way back up the Serpentine, the number one alliance blasted through quarterfinals, winning by margins of 45 points or more. Semifinals was a little closer, but number one handily defeated the number five alliance in two games. Things got significantly tougher in finals, however, as the first finals match initially ended with a blue alliance of 2976 Spartabots, 2930 Sonic Squirrels, and 4918 the Roboctopi winning by three points. However, the refs realized that a level generator switch shouldn't have been counted on blue, as 4918, that's Roboctopi, was contacting the ground. Where it gets really tricky is that after the revised score, Red still had a balanced generator switch counted for them, despite 4911 being solidly on the ground. This call was given as it was ruled that 4911 wasn't contacting the switch. This gave Red the win for match one, and after a match two victory, the number one alliance of 2910, 4911, and 4713 won the event. I want to give a massive shout out to both alliances for demonstrating major gracious professionalism as both Red and Blue brought up the fact as soon as the new ruling was given after finals match one that 4911 was in fact contacting the Red Switch and with that in consideration, Blue would have won the match. When this was brought up, the teams were let know that it was much too late to change the score. Um, from, all, from my understanding, all teams and volunteers involved handled a really tough and tricky situation with Grace. But aside from that, I want to send a huge congratulations to Engineering Inspiration winners 4915, Spartronics, and Chairman's winners 4131, the P Iron Patriots. Sounds like there's a lot of insanity going on in the PNW, Grace. Yeah. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> it sounds pretty crazy to me. And uh, while we knew LA North it was also going to be one crazy event, but I don't think any of us could have predicted just how insane the competition would be. 42 teams loaded into Thousand Oaks, California, with defending champions like 973 the Grey Bots and 4481 Rembrandts in the mix, along with California powerhouses like 1678 Citrus Circuits, 4414 High Tide, and a load of dark horses looking to seize an early victory this season. With 11 matches per team, we saw a lot of gameplay and a lot of insane matchups, like an alliance of 973, 1678, and 359. Honestly, like that kind of alliance should be outlawed in 48 states, <laughs> save, for, save, for, save for California and Indiana. Only two yeah. places that can happen. Uh, for most of the event, 44-14 was surfing the top of the leaderboard with 973 caught just below them. On day two, however, the rankings all shook up when the tide came crashing down in qualification match number 68, opening the way for Greybots to take the number one seed. So qualification 68 was kind of interesting in the sense that uh, – 
there was a red card assigned on 359 for an instance of contacting 4414. Uh, and th- the match was won in 359's alliance's favor by t- just two points. It was really close. And I think if 4414 had been able to get their climb, they would have also gotten um, the win and uh, three ranking points along with it, which would have put them just one ranking point above the rest of the competition. So high tide just barely missing out on that first spot. I know, I know that hurts. They were really close to taking it. Um, but gray bots instead took the number one position followed by one, one, five MVRT and 4414 settled into third. 973 opted to bring their Sacramento friends 1678 along for their eliminations run, as well as team four element as the third bot. 115 initially wanted 4414 to join them on their inner bracket journey, but a decline from high tide forced MVRT's hand towards choosing 6560 charging champions, a lesser known team that had been making waves both in 2019 and at this event, as well as local friends 114 Eagle Strike as their third. 4414 opted for 2659 the Rebel Warriors and 3863 Panther Botics in what was a presumed coast towards the finals. Eliminations were anything but standard, with number two alliance receiving a red card in quarters for climb over extensions, I believe, and the number three alliance getting knocked out in only two matches. In the end, it was yet another California 1v2 finals, in which the number two alliance of MVRT, Charging Champions, and Eagle Strike were able to take the first match by a margin of five points, scores of 187 to 192. Citrus, Greybots, and Element ran it back, tying up the set in the second match, 282 to 177. In the third, Citrus and Greybots decided their best strategy was to call in a backup bot, and so 5089 took to the field. This match was yet another victory for the now slightly larger number one alliance with a final result of 227 to 158. Congratulations to the winning alliance of 973, 1678, 4, and last minute backup 5089, as well as Chairman's Award winner 2429, La Canada Engineering Club, Engineering Inspiration Award winners 589, Falcon Robotics, and Rookie All-Stars from Taipei, 8129 ZZRT, or ZERT. Of course, with the event Auto Wildcard and New Wildcard generated by 973's pre-qualification through their 2019 World Championship win, both the finalist Alliance captain and first pick, 115 and 6560, will be heading on to Houston. Wow. So week one is always pretty crazy, I think, with new teams testing the field. Uh, But I think on the West Coast, it was crazier than I think it's ever been. Uh, And so with that in the books, how do you think gameplay will, in in fact, impact the events to come? And what do you you all learn from week one? Well, a huge takeaway that I had uh, attending a week one event is that the power cells get destroyed. And I mean, really hammered. Uh, definitely our robot, uh, we were expecting the balls to get small holes and get a little softer over time, but we were not expecting, uh, what we got. Definitely our robot was shooting a lot better, uh, earlier in the event and the performance continued to degrade throughout the playoffs. Um, so this is a PSA to just anyone listening if if you are listening and you have exposed chains or gearboxes uh, on the bottom of your robot uh <laughs> please 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 uh do something about that before you compete because uh you know these power cells are a limited resource for the whole first community and uh we really need to be careful with how we treat them um regardless of that it's going to be a constant factor that shooting is going to be hard later in events Uh, But it's interesting to see some teams uh, doing better than others with the transition. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how that continues throughout the season. Uh, I was also really surprised how well defense worked on the um, goal side of the field. I think that teams that just kept their opponents honest and pushed back into the protected zone of the trench run uh, really had a lot of value just from uh, preventing those closer shots. And I was surprised by that. Yeah, I noticed this week that, um, as it seems like many people have, that there's been very little use of the control panel. It seems like a lot of people are talking about that about, about this on Chief and all that, but uh, the control panel, I think, was only successfully used a couple of times uh, throughout the entire weekend. Uh, and I kind of hope we see more use throughout the season, but I'm also not particularly hopeful uh, that I think it'll actually happen. Uh, I saw some interesting strategies from 44-14 during the semis at uh, LA North. Uh, They had a strategy where they used a feeder robot in order to increase their or to improve their cycle time. So uh, their alliance partners would 
um, get balls from one of the uh, feeder stations and then put it underneath the trench and then they would shoot it from there. Uh, this seemed to work out pretty well for them. They ended up losing the semis, but I think and I kind of hope that we see a lot more of this going forward. Uh, defense, while defense in front of the opponent's goal was more effective, I thought that defense was going to be totally crazy this week. Um, and we saw a lot of defensive fouls and uh, a lot of those seems to have turned the tide of matches. So we might see that affecting some match strategy. Uh, teams opting to, instead of running defense, to be playing uh, some more safe games. Um, I saw some people shooting from behind the control panel, which I think should be could be a really useful strategy, especially with all the defense. Um, should be a good strategy for tall robots like 973. Uh, it could decrease over the, the overall cycle time as it is mostly through a protected zone. And uh, with that, uh, that could be a good strategy for tall robots. And I saw a lot more tall robots being successful than I originally predicted. And uh, there were a lot more traversing through the rendezvous r through the rendezvous zone. Yeah. Um, one thing I noticed just kind of hopping between different regional events this weekend is that triple climbs are actually totally possible. Um, I just remember in the stronghold year and even in Steamworks, like getting three robots to do something at once was very hard. Um, but it's happened. It's already happened in week one. Um, and even just in the Pacific Northwest, there's a really high level of play. And there's several uh, really well-known teams that haven't even started playing yet for the season. So I'm really excited to see what that looks like come District Champs. Uh, like what Alex said, uh, the shield generator has not been energized yet. Uh, I noticed a lot of teams just kind of ignoring the Wheel of Fortune, especially in playoffs where there's not really much payoff, if, especially if you can shoot at a higher rate than the time it'll take you to score on that control panel. Um, and with the high level of shooting as well, uh, basically the field, especially from an overhead view, it looked like a game of Hungry Hungry Hippos uh, just because of the amount of power cells, whether they were intact or not, that were still on the field. Yeah, it's exciting to see all these teams join the uh, triple hang gang is what I'm calling it personally. Yeah, uh, I like I'm loving to see it, but this <laughs> game really is about the coordination. You got a lot of teams that need to take certain positions on the field. Uh, I'm hearing, you know, some people don't think defense is strong. Some people think defense is too strong. Um, it really depends on the kind of bots that you're running into. Like the tall bots are really effective, but they run to that risk of congestion going through the rendezvous point. I saw a lot of defense bots that were trying to hold down the fort by the scoring uh, power port by the human player station. But some of the more effective ones were the ones waiting uh, in the rendezvous point to snipe the tall bots as they were coming through and just hit them around, uh, batter them up a bit. And uh, oh, my Lord, there are so many red cards this week just everywhere. Um, which segues into my next point. I'm going to reread re those rules. Like I got to look over the manual. Some things yeah. out there really looked dangerous and looked like fouls and they weren't getting called. Some things uh, I didn't realize were fouls and they were getting called. So I'm going to reread the manual sometime this week before week two. Uh, I highly encourage our audience to do the same because man, this is a tough game. This is a Definitely. brutal game. Definitely. Yeah. Well, uh, Moving on, each week uh, of the FRC Top 25 poll opens on Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific and closes on Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific. We tabulate the votes and let, uh, and specifically only take the votes from those who are from the best of the West region and have created a top 10 teams for week one. Don't forget to vote each week in the FRC Top 25 so we can bring strong representation to the best region in first. So here's our top 10 for this week. Number one, unsurprisingly, we've got 1678, the Citrus Circuits. Number two is 973, Graybots. Number three is 2910, Jack and the Bot. Number four is 4911, Cyber Knights. Ooh. <laughs> Number five is 4414, High Tide. Number six, 2471, Team Mean Machine. Number seven, 1619, Upper Creek Robotics. Number eight, 1425, Air Code Zero. Number nine, 4488 Shockwave. And number 10, 115 MVRT. So uh, what do you guys think about this list? Anyone uh, in the wrong spot or perhaps missing? MVRT is on the board. Yeah, I'm so excited. 115 is up there, boys. Uh, they've, <laughs> they've been getting knocked out in the semis at their past few seasons. And it's been unfortunate to see because they make really good robots. And so I'm super excited that they finally qualified uh, been a 115 fan for a little bit, so pretty excited to see them up there. 
finally getting recognized. Uh, 44-14, also really solid this weekend. Yeah. Uh, I think they ran into some unfortunate circumstances, but they were one of the best bots I was watching this weekend. Uh, Citrus Circuits and Grey Bots up there at the top. Winning Alliance. <laughs> good, good to see them yeah. out there. Uh, for me, 16-19 seems like they're uh, low, especially considering my back-of-the-envelope math said they, I think they scored about 200 points per match, or, or an average of 200 points per match, and were undefeated in the eliminations matches. I think if I were to, like, my personal list, I would move 16-19 up um, to fifth. Um, I think they did. They had a really good weekend, and, I mean, all the rest of the robots were fantastic this week, too, but I think 16-19 did uh, pretty admirably, and I just didn't see that recognized as well as I, as I thought. Yeah. My uh, big standout is 3674, uh, who I've been singing the praises of all year, but uh, they once again pulled out a win out of tough situation. And uh, yeah, I definitely think they deserve to be on the list. They're definitely a less well-known team uh, and a lot smaller team. I mean, they actually build the robot out of a church closet in uh, Battleground. So it's pretty amazing what they can do, but they're really a killer team. Yeah, I I agree with what Alex said. 16-19 seems pretty low, but I'm guessing that's probably because they were playing in North Dakota, which uh, I'm going to be honest, was not a regional that was really on my radar for most of the weekend. Um, but it looked like it was a pretty competitive event. Um, but 1619 has a pretty killer robot, so I'm expecting them to climb the ranks in the top 25 in the next few weeks. Um, 2910 and 4911 both have swa- solid swerve shooting robots, uh, so I'm not super surprised that they're, they are where they're at. And it's nice to see some PNW representation in the top 25 these days as well. Yeah, I think some of the PNW representation needs to be a little bit higher. 1678, you know, they had a great turnaround. They weren't looking too hot in the early part of LAM, but they really brought it back enough to clutch out the win. But I think for that reason, I don't I don't know if I would necessarily put them at number one over Graybots um, because they were having quite a few issues uh, over the course of the event. Uh, number one in turnaround by far, but not uh, for the full consistency over the course of the two days. Um, well, before we get into our week two previews, let's start our giveaway for the Andy Mark goat and discount code. The keyword for this giveaway is going to be totes goats, which is three words. Uh, type that into the chat to enter. And don't forget, you need to be following to win or subscribe for that five time subscriber luck. Week two will feature five events in the best of the West region. Let's take a deeper dive into what's to come. Alex, what's going on up north? First, we're going to take a look at the Canadian Pacific Regional. There were 42 teams competing, 10 of these teams being rookies. Uh, The first team to look out for at this regional is Team 7498, Wingus and Dingus, which I think is just a fantastic name for a robot, for a robotics team. Uh, They were the Canadian Pacific Regional winners last year, along with being the finalists at the Wisconsin Regional. Another team is 7796. Breaker Robotics, who won the 2019 Canadian Pacific Regional with 7498 and will be returning with hopes of repeating their success. Uh, and next is Team 6485, Mecha Mustangs, who won the Hopper Division at Champs and were finalists at the 2019 Canadian Rockies Regional. Another finalist from last year's Canadian Rockies Regional, Team 5015, SWAT Bots Robotics, will also be competing. They were also the finalists in the Newton Division at Champs, and it will be interesting to see if any of these teams decide to re- decide to repeat their 2019 alliances and team up once again. What's going on in El- Los Angeles? Uh, out in El Segundo, California, we'll see the second LA tournament of the season hosted at the Da Vinci School. This event's looking pretty diverse, both competitively and nationally, with teams like 987 The High Rollers, uh, 4201, and the event hosts uh, Vitruvian Bots, and 5802 Los Temeteros, joined by teams such as 5512 Pizza Mechanica, uh, and 270, uh, 2761, actually, I missed that number, Chile and Hart from Chile, uh, as well as the event's only rookies, 8159 Golden Horn from Turkey. It's sure to be one festive event, and if last weekend's LA tournament was any indicator, I'm sure this early Cali event will be just as insane. Yeah, up in the Spokane Valley is the east side of Washington's only event, the West Valley District. Uh, Due to geography and the timing of the event within the season, it wasn't until recently that the event even had the minimum 24 teams registered. It took an email from First Washington providing a grant for a team to go uh, in order to reach what's now 25 teams. Uh, If you tune in to watch West Valley on stream, you're going to see 29-10 and 49-11 right back at it again, looking for that repeat win. But you're also going to see more local teams, uh, teams that haven't played yet, 45-13 Circuit Breakers, 2605 Sea Monsters, and 21-47 Chuck along the way. 
teams are going to get a lot of play time. So the winner is going to end up being the most <laughs> robust bot standing. Uh, definitely check it out on stream or say hi if you're at the event. I'll be emceeing. Bryce, what's the Yeah, also in Washington State, we've got the Aub Auburn Mountain View event. This event is home to many strong teams, notably 1983 Skunk Worker Robotics and 2046 Bear Metal, who have traditionally been powerhouses in the PNW for the last 10 years. We'll also be seeing 2557 SodaBots, 948 NRG, 2412 Robototes, all of whom are very strong showings at the Houston Championship last year. This event is particularly interesting because uh, there are six out of the nine rookie teams in the Pacific Northwest in attendance. So Rookie All-Star is going to be in hot contention. In West Valley City, Utah, it's right near Salt Lake City, we have the Utah Regional. It looks like for all teams competing there this weekend, this is going to be their first regional. 54 teams will be at the competition from all across the West, from California to Colorado, with most teams reporting from Utah or from Colorado. Uh, team 1410, the Krakens, had a very strong showing last year at the Oklahoma Regional, making it to the finals of the Alliance captain of the Sixth Seed Alliance and pushing the finals to a third match, uh, just losing by three points. They... Uh, they received both the Innovation Controls Award and a wild card at that event and competed on the roping division. Another team with a strong performance last year was Team 5933, Judgment Call, who's the captain of the third alliance on last year's Utah Regional and made it to the finals where they faced off against 3478 and 971. The Space Cookies, Team 1868, were the regional winners of last year's LA North Regional a, and historically a very strong chairman's team with eight total regional chairman's wins to their name. And finally, Grace's own, very own, Team Taters, 21-22. The Taters were the regional winners of last year's Canadian Rockies Regional and just collected a, and just collected awards at the rest of their regionals, Innovation and Controls, Quality Awards, and even a Volunteer of the Year Award. Taters went on to win the Hopper Division as the Alliance captain at Houston last year, making them the only team at this regional that has competed on the Einstein Field. And last but not least, we've got the Del Mar Regional in San Diego, California. Of the 58 teams of this regional, this is all but one team's first regional of the season. we got a lot of great teams to pay attention to, like 3647 Millennium Falcons, who came off of a tw dominant 2019 season. Um, we've also got Team 5199 Robot Dolphins from Outer Space, who are the 2019 uh, Los Angeles Regional and Ventura Regional winners. There's also a lot of 2019 regional finalists competing, such as Team 294, Beach Studies Robotics, 4276, Surf City Vikings, 3128, Aluminum Narwhals, and only one rookie in the mix with 8006 Cathedral High School playing as well. All right. Well, with that whirlwind of events coming up this week, don't forget that we will be accepting submissions for Clips of the Week. Please post a Twitch clip you've seen or a short video that's not a match video in the fun Discord by Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And let's see how many Best of the West teams we can get on there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, draw the winner for the Andy Mark Goat. Tyler, who's the lucky viewer? All right, winner of this is going to be CashyCap3256. CashyCap3256, make sure you shoot us a message on Discord or here on Twitch. And thanks to Andy Mark for the awesome giveaway of the Andy Mark Goat. Well, that's all we got time for tonight. Thanks to everyone for hanging out with us in the chat. Don't forget to vote in the FRC Top 25 polls opening up on Sunday. You can find the links on Fun's Discord, social, or on Chief Delphi. Fun needs your help to stay loud, live, and independent. Please consider giving your support by joining Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash firstupdatesnow, or just letting people in first know that this is a place to be to get the information your team needs. Don't forget to check us out on Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and live on Twitch. If you're watching live, our next show will be the Mexico Recap coming right on up. On behalf of myself, Grace, Bryce, Alex, and our producer Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in and thank our moderators in the chat. Talk to you next week on Best of the West. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.